Today we're going to learn about solving equations by graphing. So this will be page 40 in your notebook. Our learning target is to prove that two expressions are equal by graphing an equation to find the zeros. So these are the um, values. The zeros are the values that make the our solution set. So when you graph, the zeros are what the solution set would be on the horizontal axis. Okay, so just with quadratics, we know a lot about linear equations. We, we spent lesson 2.6 talking about the different cases, no solution, all real numbers, and what one solution looks like with linear. Um, so with quadratics, there's three possibilities um, for your solution set. With one solution, a quadratic is a U-shaped parabola. It's called a parabola. So with one solution quadratics, it'll be where the vertex intersects the x-axis so it only touches in one spot and it's actually a repeated solution so let's say that this was uh, 3 our solution set here would be x equals 3 right most quadratics however are going to have two solutions remember quadratics are things to the second power so there's two x's that will or two of the variable that have values that that make the equation true and so what you'll normally see is you'll see a quadratic that intersects the horizontal or the x-axis at two different places. And these would be your two solutions. So let's say this is 3. Let's say that this is intersecting at negative 2. So your solution here would be you know x equals negative 2, comma, x equals 3. Right? And then no solution would be where you see the quadratics never going to intersect the horizontal axis because the arrows are pointing down and it's already below it. Or if the arrows were pointed up and it was already above it, you can, you can deduce that the line of the graph is never going to intersect this horizontal axis below it. So this is what a no solution would look like. And that would just be x equals, sorry, x equals no solution. So those are the three different tops, or these are the three different possibilities. One solution, it only touches once. Most quadratics are going to have two solutions, so the two places or the two zeros. And then no solution where there's no value that it crosses the horizontal axis at. And remember, when you're trying to find the x value, you're always looking for when y is zero, because y is zero on the horizontal axis. Example number one, the directions are to use mathematical tools to find the zeros of the equation and then present the solutions to the equation in set notation. So our first step is to note a zero expression. And I put y here because when we are typing in our expression in the graphing calculator, we're trying to figure out when x equals zero or what the x value is for when the y value is zero. Right? And then our variable expression is the x expression. The, the expression that we're going to type into the bar. So always choose the side that has the least amount of stuff to make the zero side, the zero expression, and then I make the other side the variable expression. So we need to get rid of the negative 7r. In order to get zero, we're going to have to subtract the number or what we want to eliminate. So that's our second step here. So we're going to use equality properties to rearrange the equation to equal zero. We want this side to equal zero. So we have to subtract negative 7r from both sides. So we've subtracted negative 7r from the variable expression and from the zero, the side that we are going to get 0 on. And when we simplify, just to show you mathematically, we've got negative 7r minus minus, which is a plus 7r. And we know that negative 7r plus 7r will simplify to 0. So after we simplify, we have 0 on the right side. And then on the left side, we don't need to simplify it because we are going to graph it using the graphing calculator so we can actually type it in just like this. So now our third step is to graph to find the zeros on the horizontal axis. So we're looking for when y equals 0, what is the x value? We're trying to find the r value in this case that equals 0 or makes this expression equal 0 when we plug in whatever the solution is. So let's go ahead and put this into the graphing calculator right now. So instead of r, I'm going to type in x because 
That's how the graphing calculator reads it. Then I'm shift six to get the square. Minus two, minus 30, minus parentheses, negative seven X. All right, so now I'm gonna hit graph or I'm gonna hit enter. And I can see that it's crossing a one place, but there should be two places that it's crossing. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. And now I can see the two places. And this button right here, this is the intercept button. It says find the zeros or the, the roots. So we can click this button and then we can click where we think it's crossing. And sometimes it glitches. So I'm gonna try this other one. And this sometimes this calculator glitches so you can try the other one. And you can see here the X value negative 10 has a Y value of zero. So we know that if we plug in negative 10 to this expression right here, it's going to simplify to zero. So this is one of our solutions. And our other solution would be this value over here, which is three. When R is three, it will simplify the equate or this expression to zero. And so we have our two solutions, negative 10 and three. So real quickly, I'm going to test the solution. So I'm gonna plug in three for where both of the R's are. And then I'm gonna simplify both sides to see if they come out to the same value. So three squared minus 30 equals negative 21. Negative seven times three equals negative 21. We have the same value on both sides of the equation. Both the expressions are equal. So three is one of our solutions. So we can go ahead and put it in our set notation. Now let's test negative 10. When we plug these values in for the variable, make sure we put these in parentheses. Um, that way the calculator does the order of operations correctly. Negative 10 should be in parentheses squared. So when we um, simplify the left expression, we get a 70. And then when we simplify the right expression, when we simplify the right expression, we also get a positive 70. So negative 10 makes both expressions equal each other too. So we put that in our solution set as well. And that is our answer. Example number two. Let's go ahead and denote a zero side and a variable side. This is a, um, this has less stuff. The right expression has less stuff, so let's make this the zero side. It doesn't matter, but it's just easier to, to I guess, deal with less things. So now our second step is to actually get the zero on one side. In order to do that, we've got to subtract this side from itself and from the other expression. So using the subtraction property of equality, I've subtracted the expression from the left side of the equation, I've subtracted the expression from the right side. I put it in parentheses because if I do this, the calculator will read it correctly. And we know that anything minus itself will equal zero. So now we've got to figure out what value for A will cause the left expression to simplify to equal zero. So let's go ahead and graph this in the graphing calculator. And so I've put in the expression in the graphing calculator and replaced the A's with X's. And then everything else stayed the same. Just double checking to make sure I typed it in correctly. I, I have. Now I can go ahead and hit enter. And it has graphed my quadratic. So I'm going to go ahead and use this trace feature or maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. I can see it's probably going to be negative 7 and negative 5. But let me make sure. I'm going to click this button right here. Click to where I think it is. Okay, so one of them is saying x is negative 5 when y is 0, so it's crossing at negative 5. And the other one, let's see, it's crossing at negative 7. When y is 0, the x value is negative 7, so it's crossing at negative 7. So now I'm going to go ahead and test to make sure both of these are in fact solutions. So everywhere where I saw an A, I plugged in negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, and there was two A's on the other side, negative 5, negative 5. I put these in parentheses so that the calculator reads it right. So here's the expression on the left with the correct information. I hit enter, I get negative 195. Now I'm going to do the same thing to see if the right side simplifies to the same value. 
So if negative 5 is in fact the solution, when we hit enter here for the expression, it should simplify to negative 195. It does. We know that negative 5 is one of our solutions, so we can say in set notation A, when A equals negative 5. And now let's go ahead and test negative 7. So you can see I put negative 7 in for all the negative 5s on the left, in the left expression. Now we're going to hit enter. We get negative 385. Now I'm going to put it in for the right expression and see if it comes back to the same value. So I put the negative 7 for where the a's were on the right. Now I'm going to hit enter. I get negative 385, so we know that negative 7 is also one of our solutions. Okay, third example. Let's go ahead and, and make this the variable side. We'll make this the zero side. And then we can move on to the second step, which is to actually get the zero on the right side. So you can see that I've subtracted negative x plus 4x squared from the left expression as well as the right expression using the subtraction property of equality. We know that it's going to equal zero. So now we can go ahead and graph this expression right here to find the zeros. Okay, so I've put in the expression into the expression bar and it's important that I am putting in parentheses um, what I'm subtracting. If I take the parentheses away, you can see that the graph will change. Make this a plus. Now it's a double negative. You can see the graph will change um, if I take the parentheses away. So it's important that we can uh, keep the parentheses when we're graphing this. So we've got what we think is our what we think are our zeros. There's two of them. I'm going to use this button right here to find out what this one is. Negative four when y equals zero, x is negative four. So that's one of our potential solutions. And the other one when y is zero, x is ten. So we've got negative four and ten. And then I would go ahead and I'd plug in into both for all the x's and see if both expressions equal the same value. But I know that this is the correct answer. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in set notation. 